On Saturday 26 August 2017, it rained all through the night and the following day saw residents of Makudi, the Benin state capital, growing in tears. Just when they felt the worst was over, three days after the rains came again and this time it was unimaginably disastrous. Hundreds of thousands of people were left homeless by the flood that sacked some communities across the state with Makudi, the Benin state capital, worst hit. As you can see, this place has been like this for more than a month or so. The water actually, sometimes it comes like previous years, it was not as dangerous as this. This year it was something else. If I were sleeping and all of a sudden we just saw water entering our rooms, Cannot even, in fact, we just have to, I have to run away with my children. When we sit down, water they come. And then this water, when you come, at times with the day in the night, before the day break, you go see water come pack you. Unexpected. Now, like, now only me and my mats and my four children, I pack my car, I say, anything we go do. If you go and go feel assist, we thank God. If you not assist, ma, and then we know say, go and go assist by God's grace. Yeah, we be sit down here, water is, they tell me they fall. Water come pack here, all this house. Water pack and all we there, and I saw we they look at it. They surprise the place, so we they go carry us. They make sure our car all here, water pack and all. Water, water pass through the gate there, that if you even come to this place that day, you will not even, you can't even stay here. The water overflowed all this area, even in, right into the compound, there was no space to, like, that we have to go up there to sleep in other, uh, I mean, one of our neighbors' uh, house, the house up there. I made the drainage, but the unfortunate thing is that there is nowhere this drainage can link to drainage there. The government is supposed to have provided a drainage system through this city way, so that all these little gutters we make, the water can pass through that channel down to the bigger uh, drainage way. The worst hit areas within Makudi metropolis include Achusa, Idie, Welfare Quarters, Mobile Barracks, New Kanchio Leao, Wadata Market, Uruko Market, Gyadu Villa, Kucha Utebe, Breweries, Nyiman Leao, Behind Civil Service Commission, Radio Benway, Industrial Leao, BIPC Quarters, Uniagric Road, Katsungo, Genabe, Behind Ofikom, Uniagric Study Center, Behind GT Bank, Wadata Old Prison, Agbo and Demekwe Communities. Um, water it doesn't get to this extent because I can still remember that when we have this water, we sometimes we still stay with the water. But this time around, you can see it pulled down on our fence. And then you can also see the height of the water. It's almost crossed the fence. And um, it damaged so many of our properties, the chairs, the generators, and our foodstuffs. Everything was damaged. The water used to affect us every year. Okay. Every year we used to move after this place. For us, we pack our things up. When it left, the water left, then we are still st around. Um, we are still expecting, you know, because sometimes we move out, uh, out of this place September, October. Oh, Yamba, Yambo Lunagan, and Mehenchi, Yerung, and say, Wouldn't a Kaki Jimmy Yampa? My yam, my big, as she yell a little up by Maki, and some of the lamb girl and mamma ye here, ya poor. Nasa Fak will see, Gasa Kuraki, she just do me. So, Samba Zambi say, State government to Naluma, my wassy, my tissy, my vice, say, Binda, I'm girl and mamma, Kalanga. Wouldn't a sin long go, got on by Gansi, you yassy here. 
ka government e se gasi yo ya se ha chu gbenda am gbe ngere ma ma current sembele ya ele o je pa se sida hape yo vulu sha la la ga ya o mo pa na va ve wa senega shi ka ngi e ve a ve ve wa senego pa se faga eh ka pe sulu ya de cha ya se he je ne ka yo ba va va su se ha zo he den ye me oru ya na va nege se he ndi he ya na fa ti o va nga pa na ti ndi o na va nege se he ya ka fa da europe ya va nege se ba ga he shi ti de e ka e va na se he ya nge ya nge m gele ma ma ye ji ne ne ya fa da europe package ya ka ti bread ku a make bi ya package na e va na se shi pe na nge no se lu he ne nge yo vu lo va su o se la shi ya ti de a chi ka fa ba government po po ya ngwa sen shi pe solution ga ha chu se za pe yo vu ye la ga ka ke ka sha pe yo vu ye le lu va na kya e pa se he ne ve se o ngwa va na se ku a mo mo ga According to the Benin State Emergency Management Agency (SEMA), over 110,000 people were displaced. A breakdown shows that 5,125 persons were displaced in Achusa, while in Ije, 217 houses were destroyed, leaving 5,200 persons displaced from their homes. Also behind the Civil Service Commission, 200 houses were submerged in the flood, and 5,777 persons displaced. At Genabe, 200 houses were also affected, with 5,021 persons displaced. 218 houses around the Wuruko market were affected, with 1,000 persons displaced. And at Wadata market, 150 houses were affected, and 4,300 persons displaced. At the industrial layout, 69 houses were flooded, and 4,310 persons displaced. In Dimikwe, 101 houses were affected, while 7,820 persons were displaced. The SEMA sources revealed further that 137 houses were flooded in Katungu, North Bank, with 6,031 persons displaced, while at Agbo, 201 houses were affected and 5,728 persons displaced. It Actually, the drainage, the only solution to this flood of 18 is this major drainage way to link ED to that uh, mobile barracks. That is the only solution to this thing. So we are, I'm appealing, personally appealing to the government. We have missed our effort, as you can see this, uh, this place. It is, this gutters you see are personal effort by, by individuals. But the government has a bigger role to make that drainage way so that all these uh, doctors or these drainage ways can be linked to the major drainage. Without that, any personal effort here cannot help. So I'm appealing to the government. The only thing we need from them is to make that drainage through this Zone 4 ED down to the mobile barracks so that water can have uh, a free flow. Without that, we'll still be talking about this thing living year in, year out. Mm. That man loves this. Even the thing which is here, passing through this area, at the back of this thing, the thing fell down. The boat, uh, my logs, you have seen it outside. The chairs, fridge, and matlasses. Tell you that uh, the properties destroyed were monumental because the water level was such that in most places that were flooded, uh, water rose up to linter level. Disaster prompted responses from the government, NGOs and individuals. First, the Benin state government set up an IDP camp at the Makudi International Market to accommodate those rendered homeless by the floods. A total of 4,706 persons were registered from 546 households when the camp opened. This prompted the swift intervention of the Nigerian Air Force Makude in catering to the health needs of the displaced persons residing at the IDP camp. We are currently deployed here at the order of the Chief of the Nigerian Air Staff uh, to come and make sure that we render medical support to the flood victims here deployed at the Ottawa International Market here in Makude, Benue State. Well, it has been wonderful because uh, we've seen those that actually don't have um, medical support for themselves. 
so they've been coming here since the day we deployed here on the 3rd of September 2017, very specific. And uh, we rendered a medical assistance to about 900 plus, about 1,000 uh, people. And so far we referred about um, two pregnant women. Yes, one had a CS uh, yesterday, that's cesarean section yesterday and uh, we also evacuated one woman who was abandoned in a butcher somewhere in town and she's received medical attention at the federal medical center There's, there has been no any known outbreak that has been witnessed on the ground the cases that we've gotten here on the ground we are going to tackle them and treat them adequately I must say um, that the response has been so amazing so tremendous. Um, I must appreciate um, 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 private individuals, as, uh, CSOs, and the rest. Uh, we've had enough. Um, I'm afraid to say, but we've had more than enough in this camp. Um, I think the only problem we've had here is distribution, because no matter how we try to distribute and cover, the IDPs will still complain they don't have, because they are trying to get maybe double share simply because. They know we will have to live here someday and they want to have enough when they get back home. Just yes, what well, the first day we came here, I nearly regret the reason why I came. Because uh, when, we, when we came, when we arrived, the, the first people that we are considered were those who were only pregnant women and those who have children. So I was thinking it's those who have children and pregnant women that is to be helped. But within yesterday and today, everything just suddenly changed. I couldn't understand. I couldn't believe myself sleeping on mattress yesterday. I couldn't wake up today because for the past one week, I was sleeping on the mat. My neck was even paining me. And I was like, God, when can I get out of this problem? And yesterday, I thought the mattress that was brought, though the houses, other places were filled with mattresses, but they couldn't distribute it for us on TNT. The federal government responded immediately the floods happened by directing the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to move to Benue, liaison with the State Emergency Management Agency, as well as other stakeholders in providing palliatives to ameliorate the plight of the IDPs. NEMA brought into the state assorted relief materials, including food and non-food items. Bengonet is an umbrella network for all NGOs and CSOs in Benue State. They have been proactive in the wake of the disaster from the onset. Um, it's been uh, helpful and we are moving on well. From the donor side, the Different organizations are brought in relief, uh, international organizations, and local philanthropists, and some other members of the public. And immediately those things are brought, they are being uh, distributed to the IDPs. I think that there's a gap between the stakeholders the people who cut the shots, like Sema is be, supposed to be at the helm of their affairs. But when this happened, they lacked coordination. There was no proper coordination. There's no plan. It might surprise you to know that 
Benue does not have an emergency preparedness and response plan. And once that plan is not on, on site, it's not on ground, something happens, there's nobody to say, let's go. We, we want synergy. We want to synergize with government. Not that we are, we are not imposing ourselves on them, but they must be checked and balances. So When the camp was established early last month, the first day we had just only one person. But the following day, people started coming in because there were relief materials that were coming because this place was designated as uh, the IDP camp. And when they saw relief coming from various organizations, government and all the people started stripping in. So that time to this day, you can understand that the Vice President of Nigeria came with two ministers. Uh, the Director General National Emergency Management also came. And the Presidential Committee on Flood and Rehabilitation had just come to open the other camp at Agan, which was, uh, which was opened by the, the Governor of Benue State, but was unfunctional until when they came. We started with a lot of challenges. So we later overcame them when, firstly, there was no uh, clinic and medical doctor. But sooner or later, the Minister of Health, Minister of Health came in, and the Nigerian office also came in with a lot of, of medical doctors and uh, medicine to give them medication. Later on, there was no water on this camp. But sooner or later, the Minister of Water Resources started bringing in camp water with tanks. And as I'm speaking to you now, there are a lot of water on the camp now because UNICEF came here and dug a, a borehole in support of what was coming from the ministry. If you look at the store here, this is just one of the stores. If you look at it, how things are put, as you are looking at them here, you understand that every part of a place or place where you see stores, you might definitely might have come in by one NGO or the other. Or it is of note that the depth of the river Benue can no longer contain the volume of water flowing through it, especially during the peak of the rain at the Makudi area. This has frequently caused the overflow of the river to the surrounding communities along its banks, thus causing disastrous consequences to lives and properties, with farmlands washed away, thereby robbing many residents of their means of livelihood. Within Makudi Metropolis, many have blamed the occurrence of the flood on the town planning authorities for allowing the people to abuse the Makudi master plan and not providing adequate canals and drainage channels within the town. This can be seen where in many places, structures are built on waterways and drainage channels, thus preventing the free flow of water out of the city to be emptied into the river Benue. Other reasons for the flood have been hinged on the drains being choked due to the dumping of solid waste. Both the present administration and successive governments in the state have all been blamed to a large extent for not doing enough to permanently solve the flood problem. The land is registered. Uh, urban coming later. Before a land, a, a land is registered and titled. It's the responsibility of the Minister of Lands and Survey. So it is at the point of development that Oban comes in. And in most cases, this land are titled. And before the title is to be given out, the disciples are supposed to have gone there to check to see if uh, that area is marked for uh, drainage or for non-residential purposes in terms of the environmental hazards it's potent. Authorities, I think I must commend the authorities, the NGOs and the CSOs, they've been so proactive. Uh, without them, the attention this has received wouldn't have been there. Uh, they have done so much, I must appreciate them. Government on its past two has been very proactive, right at the state and federal level. You will recall that uh, His Excellency, uh, the Vice President was here himself, Apart from that, a lot of other ministers and the individuals who have been able to contribute uh, money and materials to us. Some said government too have done very well. I think the response is very okay. And uh, what is left now is for government to take proactive action to ensure that this does not repeat by dredging, 
the river as promised by the president and also at the state to one level two by ensuring that channels are created around those areas. The vice president visited us in the camp here. He do promise that uh, they will assist the state government, the state government with ecological funds so that they will do proper drainages so this natural occurrence will not happen again. And uh, I'm not in a good position to tell you whether the money has been received or not. Well, uh, to the best of my ability, the, the state government has been trying to enlighten the general public about blocking the drainages. Uh, the state government has a plan. We've been giving the people enlightenment on the construction of buildings on water channels. People deliberately go and block the channels because they want to have a house. As part of moves to control the menace of flooding in the state, the federal government has promised to dredge the river Benue and construct additional drainage systems. President Mohamed Buhari expressed optimism that the dredging of the river will provide a permanent solution not only to tackling the flood, but also create job opportunities for youth who will be involved in the project. The Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo stated this on Wednesday 6 September when he led the federal government delegation to see the flood disaster himself and also identify with the victims. Also as part of efforts to prevent future disaster of this magnitude in the state, the President has responded positively to the plea by the Benin State Governor Samuel Otom to include Benue in the next trench of states to benefit from the 1.6 billion Naira in ecological intervention fund. This particular flooding is affecting about 21 local governments. We're having in some places the bridges, culverts have been washed out, roads have been divided into two. Most of our communities cannot have access to their various places. So it is uh, a big challenge. Well, we thank God for, uh, first of all, let's say we thank God for the governor of Benue State for providing this place for the RDPs to be here. And um, the, the general lifestyle in camp has, um, has, 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 has been that of uh, mixed uh, feeling the hard time, the rough times and the good times. Bengal has been trying very well, and I think on the side of uh, Sema, maybe I don't know whether it's because they are short of manpower, I don't understand. But Bengal has always been on ground. You see, they are, uh, you, 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 you turn around everywhere, you see there are men are on ground to, to provide the needed services here, unlike Sema. But when we kind of try to find out, sometimes they kind of tell us they, they, they can't be here and at the other side, so some of their men are on their other gun, and that is the reason why there are not so many of them on ground here. Well, Since the flood occurred, there has been response from distinct quarters cutting across government, the private sector, religious, traditional and educational institutions, philanthropists, development partners as well as other well-meaning individuals and groups, both within and outside Nigeria, in catering to the needs of the IDPs who have been displaced by the floods. Our role is to come and see you and continue to pray that the Almighty God does not allow this kind of thing to happen again. I want to counsel and charge that whatever comes in should be distributed under God to make sure that the people affected receive what comes in and they should not disappear into people's homes. The new materials here should not find their way in the marketplace, but should be distributed only to the people affected. Right behind me is the popular River Benway, and in front of me is the Wadata Market. 
The market is a popular market in Makudi Metropolis and is situated right beside the river. Activities around this market are threatened by virtue of the perennial floodings. Now, with the recent floods in Makudi, it is very, very difficult to say if this market will survive the next phase of time. As the waters recede, one wonders what will be the plight of the IDPs as they prepare to return to their various homes. For those whose houses and properties were destroyed, what chance do they have to give life meaning once more? Also, in the long run, how best can victims of the floods be economically impaired so that they can continue to live their normal lives? And as the rainy season gradually winds up, it is expected that much will be done by the government and other stakeholders to ensure that the severity of the flood disaster is drastically reduced in the next season.